one more from the top. Good morning, everybody. Thanks for joining me this Friday afternoon for, uh, or actually it's Friday morning, for uh, five hacking tips. Um, it's uh, Today we're going to cover personal security in general. Uh, basically, I'm going to go through a list of uh, about a dozen items uh, that I recommend for people to, to lock down their personal security. Um, I've titled the uh, presentation Personal Security Hardening. I think I, I titled the... Uh, uh the, the the youtube cast of uh, something like personal security lockdown or something like that um but it is what it is it's basically making it a little more difficult for an attacker um to to basically get into your accounts get into um, um areas that could, could that could lead to further information about your privacy uh, that could uh, potentially cost you financially or uh, in, in various ways, whether it's directly um, taking your money or whether it's a, a ransomware situation. Um, and, um, and then there's other ways, you know, I mean, people can take your credit card information and resell that. There's other indirect avenues of just getting your information. So the idea behind this is not to do like a complete um, like a presidential lockdown or something like that, but to, uh, to to approach that or to provide the mindset of what it takes to get close to there. If you implemented all of these, you'd be very well locked down. Um, and, um, and I'll go through these right now really quick. So um, basically, if you have a router or a Wi-Fi router and you, you think maybe you've been hacked or what's the first thing to do, um, besides turning everything off, uh, the first thing that I would do before I brought everything up is replace the router. If you've had the router for more than, um, like, say, a two years or two and a half years, and, and it's a consumer grade, like a Buffalo or an Elecom router or, or whatever the flavor is in your part of the world. Um, I live in Japan, so those are the two favorites. But anyways, um, and you haven't changed the default password that came with the factory particularly, replace the router. And change the default password um, and, and, and it, at the very least if you're sitting there right now you don't think you're hacked but you haven't changed the default factory password I would recommend doing that right and going on to the next one is you know if you've got a uh, like a brokerage account or you've got a, um, a heavy um, transactional uh, like even a corporate account whether it's like a personal corporate account or uh, whatever that you do online transactions with. And if you're going to lose a lot of money out of that particular account, if somebody were to intercept that transaction is, is, you know, don't, don't do it flippantly on an iPad or an iPhone that has to connect wireless. Use a wired connection, plug it into a PC or a Mac and use a wired connection so that you know that at the very least, in that transaction, in that network connection, which takes us to the next suggestion is, is if you use a VPN and you've got a wired connection, you're actually a lot safer than somebody who's doing it just over wireless and, and may or may not have a VPN enabled. So um, that takes us on, on to the, the fourth item is a lot of times what comes with these accounts and, and accounts that you have to do transactions like this with is we don't put strong enough passphrases in them or the, uh, the, the application doesn't provide for a very long or a complex password. First of all, if, if you're dealing with that right now, stop it, complain. I mean, you know, for, uh, for most of the major banks I know, the security is actually quite robust and you can put in a very long password. Um, so, uh, or a passphrase. And what I mean by that, a passphrase, I have... I have my passphrases. Um, you know, you, you can do anything from like uh, like a three or four word, um, <laughs> you know, uh, haikus are, are a good thing to start with, I think, uh, and then and, and add to that and add symbols and you know replace letters with symbols like A for A for the app mark and you know I for the shebang mark and that kind of thing. Um, which takes me to the next one, number five, which is install KeePass. 
So KeyPass or a, another password manager um, that's going to generate automatically a very complex password that you set, you know, where you set the parameters and, and, and it's going to store them in an encrypted manner. And you're going to have that 24 character plus, you know, longer spine passphrase. You know, if you want to be really safe, put 50 on it. Um, but, you know, to have that passphrase um, blocking down that database and and I've always used KeePass. It's it's multi-platform. Um, there have been you know there there have been some um, uh, I guess a couple of versions ago there was something, but they were you know they up, updated it immediately. There to me it was no impact. Um, which takes us to number six is I mean this is very basic. You know it comes with PCs. And what I mean is antivirus. It comes with everybody's PC. But if you know if if you want to use like a consumer grade or, or just whatever came with your PC, um, think twice about that. Like, look at go shopping for that. Look for real, uh, real time threat protection features and that kind of thing. I use Bitdefender. Um, I switched from McAfee. McAfee, you know, is still very good, and they use real time threat protection. I've just, as a malware developer, I've had a harder time getting things past the Bitdefender, which is why I put it on my PC here. Um, and of course, when I do malware dev, I do something else. But, anyways, um, think about that and and, um, and 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 look at that and look at the features in there. Also, you know, dive in, look at the settings, look at like what the history is. Find out how to to look at the history of your endpoint software if you're interested in your security and, and what's going on. Um, Number seven is basically it's it's more physical. It prevents um, um, man out of the hotel attack. Um, it it prevents a lot of things. Um, a lot of times, like if you're trying to establish egress on a system that might be rather locked down, um, be, either because of endpoint protection or whatever, um, you may have to reboot. And and if you know you come back and you're your PC is asking you for a BIOS password because it's rebooted, then, you know, that's that's even more protection. That's, for you, that's a flag. It's like, hey, I didn't shut down my PC or I didn't restart my PC and it's plugged in. What happened, right? Okay. And that kind of vigilance, too. Add that, make that number 14 for today. You know, having that kind of vigilance. And, and yeah, why is my CPU fan racing so hard and I have been booted up for an hour and a half, and I'm just trying to connect to wireless. Think about it. So um, number eight, um, this is this is very basic. So a lot of times, if you're using Windows 10 Pro or Windows 11 Pro, this this is almost automatic. You, you uh, I think maybe Windows 11 enables BitLocker automatically. Um, but whatever the case is set up Windows BitLocker on your Windows hard drive if you're using Windows. If you're using uh, Mac, you have that option, or OS X, if you have that option when you when you first set it up, do the hard drive encryption there too. Um, enable YubiKey. Um, so YubiKey is uh, basically, it's this little guy. Um, it's a... Um, it's just a little USB-C thing that registers. Uh, it, it has a key built into it. I, I don't know the details of the technology. I just know that without this, you can't log into my Windows. Um, and um, and you, know, you can buy them on Amazon or, or wherever. Um, and uh, they are they are very effective. You can also use them for other MFA things. So I think Google allows you to use YubiKey. For some of their applications, and or I think all of it, or to log into the, I think to log into the administrative area too, you can set it up. Anyways, uh, find out for yourself because uh, <laughs> that's kind of uh, out of the scope here. But that's the well, actually no, it's not. Uh, the other thing is being interested in what the security features of applications are. Um, that, that's very important. Um, but what we're doing here though, if somebody wants to target you, they're going to get you. So the thing is here is we're just creating pretty much layered barriers that we're creating barriers to, to make it harder. You know, if they get to one level, they're going to think, well, do I want to 
pay that much. So that basically the, the, the effort cost gets so great that um, you're actually a lower priority target. Um, number 10, an able MFA where possible. This is without saying your, your web application is telling you to enable multi-factor authentication is what that means, by the way. Um, and a lot of people are just really fine with short mail, you know, on their cell phone. That's actually the weakest form, particularly in the U.S. In Japan, we're a little safer because a lot of cell phones are locked to their SIM. But in the U.S., where that's quite loose, uh, and people can actually uh, spoof your your uh, your short mail, your uh, well, basically spoof your cell phone. Um, I would say definitely use an MFA app, and and maybe SMS is a secondary like confirmation. Um, Number 11 is, I go back and forth, this is a thing that I have with, you know, this is an ongoing argument amongst my friends, but I would say use webmail. Don't, don't use Outlook, don't use Udora, don't use Thunderbird or anything that will take a macro or an extension. Um, just just use the web interface um, and, and make sure, you know, of course, they, they're HTTPS by default. Um, they're controlling like what's delivered to you. I've used Gmail um, um, actually professionally and um, the business, I've used the business suite now for a little over 10 years and I've never really had, um, I've had a couple times where I've had some pretty obvious spear phishing hit my inbox, um, but uh, very rare, very rare. And, and the whole time I've used, the, they're, they're very good. Um, I've had to dig in and, and find things that um, that weren't, um, you know, they had come from a proton mail or something like that. So they, they weren't trash, and I, I had found that it got filtered straight into the trash. So, you know, things like that, but that's, that's a filter thing, I think. So that's my recommendation. And the reason is, is I've just seen far more damage done with Outlook than I have seen with like a... Um, but even with like the O365 Outlook web interface, like Outlook, um, it just traumatized a lot of companies and I've seen it happen. So it's just not my recommendation, use webmail. And actually, if you look at the way that we communicate now, email should actually be something that's quite secondary or, or a little more official um, because we're all on Slack, we're using different uh, mediums of communication that are far more efficient and get a lot more done. Um, a lot more synchronous. Anyways, or Yeah. Anyways, um, number twelve here is don't put all your eggs in one basket. So like, yeah, I know there's Microsoft lovers out there. There's G Suite lovers out there. Everybody, you know, has their preference. But the you know the one thing about it is like if you I, I my my preference is I use the Microsoft Office Suite because I have to, and I have a lot of clients. When I have cl uh, that that use that, when I have clients that want to use the G Suite, um, I'm I'm actually fine with that because that's my default. That's what I use. Um, but I do use PowerPoint. I use Word. I use all those other documents, and I store them in a in a cloud drive on Google uh, Google Drive, basically. So, I mean, that's just the way that I roll. Google's had some issues that have come up and everything, but I would say all quite minor, especially if you're in the business program. Uh, number 13 is, uh, you know, if you really want to go this far, and this is like another barrier thing, and it's basically a privacy thing where you're actually, um, like I said, if somebody wants to get at you, they're going to get at you, they're going to find you. Um, but it's another step where you basically remove yourself from social media and from a lot of open forums that are out there on the internet. Um, this, you know, there's a couple services out there. One's delete me, uh, delete me.com. And I saw another one, uh, yesterday is privacy B, um, and privacy B.com. It's listed there. I'll put those in the video notes later up later on when I upload it. Um, and I've also included, by the way, going back to enabling Windows BitLocker, I've included the Microsoft link in there, in case you haven't noticed. Um, thank you much. Uh, oh, by the way, so adding, I'm sorry about removing the information from the Internet. 
So uh, about that, so what that is, that's very much a privacy focused thing. I've had people look at my Facebook business page and say, oh, here's a picture of your house. And it's like, well, yeah, what are you going to do, man? <laughs> I mean, great. That's a privacy thing. That's not necessarily a security thing. But with really good privacy comes an added layer of security. And, and it, 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 it drives, it, it makes it a, a, a bit harder uh, during the enumeration process when somebody's trying to isolate a target and find out what they're about and who they know and people that they know. You know, by having a big Facebook presence, many people have experienced where somebody does almost an identical profile of them and then friends all of their friends and pulls them over and that kind of thing. Facebook actually catches that, like, like right now. But, I mean, or I've, I've noticed they have because I got a notice and it was an account that was only a couple weeks old. But, you know, um, if you want to prevent that, delete me is another way is a way of doing that there's services out there you can actually go to facebook you can download all of your pictures you can you can delete your profile and and facebook has that readily available because of other i guess legislation or litigation um but this service does it all the way across the board and you know they'll they'll research your name on the internet and look up where it's popping up and then go and ask go and issue the takedown um, that's all for today. Um, I hope you got something out of this. Please subscribe. Thanks for all the support. Over a thousand subscribers and what are we talking about now? Three and a half months. Um, um, a lot of likes, uh, uh, a lot of comments. This, um, this is not necessarily hacking, um, but it's from a hacker explaining how you're going to do a lockdown. Um, personally, and it's what I've also seen with a lot of startups uh, do, and, and also like people that are involved in M and A. There's one other thing in here that I didn't include for those of you sticking around toward the end. Is for you know a lot of people think that WhatsApp or Line or or Kakao Talk or whatever is encrypted and it is, and so it's safe and and all that. Um, Think twice about that. Look at something a little stronger. Look at what like uh, the journalists are doing and, and that kind of thing. And a lot of them are using an application like um, Signal. Um, and then there's a, a there's another one out there. It's not it's not coming to me. But you know, go into Google and do a search Signal VS as in verses and see what else pops up there. Because um, there are a, a lot better apps out there that are far more encrypted. So if you want to talk to somebody about something that's private, again, that's a privacy thing as well as a security thing. Um, think about um, changing your, your chat app that's on your phone or on your iPad. Okay, thank you for joining me today. And uh, I hope you enjoyed this and I hope you got something out of it. Have a good day. Take care.